One of the biggest concepts I find developers struggle with is the syntax itself. Where to put brackets, spaces, semicolons. Simply understanding the correct place to put brackets, semicolons, parentheses, and things like that. The syntax is the arrangement of words and symbols to form valid code. There will be many lessons on the language syntax, as it's a very important thing to understand. And just as importantly, you should understand the syntax of the really simple program we just created before we move on to anything else. Let's open up the project from the first lesson and break down every single line and understand the full syntax of that program. There will be many new concepts, words and terms used in this lesson, but don't worry about those. Simply focus on the syntax of the language. We will explain all these other concepts in future lessons. The importance of this lesson is to teach you to write valid code that compiles and can run, not necessarily to understand the code yet. So let's jump in. Even in this simple program, there is already lots going on. We have a using directive, a namespace, a class, a method, and several statements. We will cover all of these terms shortly. For now, we just want to focus on the syntax that forms valid code. For example, let's remove the semicolon from the using directive and we could press F5 to build and run. Instead, just to build the project, instead of trying to build and run the project, let's just press Control, Shift, and B. This will cause it to just build, but not run. Notice the error we get here. This means that our project has code that is invalid. This doesn't now create a valid, runnable program. Without valid code, there is no program to run, share, or install, so we must fix it. As you can see here, if we delete the currently built application and try to build again, there is no application. It will not build successfully without valid code and valid syntax. So there is no program to run. This build error happens because we have invalid syntax. Let's put back the semicolon as the using directive must end with the semicolon. That is one of the rules of the syntax. Using directives must end with a semicolon. The using directive specifies that this specific file can use the system namespace without having to fully qualify it. For example, if we hover over the console, you can see in the pop-up it says system.console. If we were to remove the using of system, console is no longer found, and we would have to type system.console which is called the fully qualified name. Don't worry too much about understanding usings and namespaces for now, just focus on the syntax. Next is the line we declare a namespace called hello world. Namespaces are used to group code into logical areas as the code grows. They are optional and we could just remove the namespace like this and the code would still compile. Declaring namespaces and thereby placing code inside of the namespace is done by creating opening and closing curly braces after the namespace name. This forms a code block. A code block is simply zero or more statements enclosed inside of the curly braces. So this code would be classed as being inside of this namespace's code block. This method would be inside of this class's code block. Next, we create a class. Classes are a big part of C-sharp and we will cover them shortly. The class is created by specifying the word class, then a space, and then the name of the class. Afterwards, to place code inside of the class, just like the namespace, it is done by creating a pair of open and closed curly braces after the name of the class then all code inside of those braces is inside of that class. Now inside of the class, we create a method. A method is a block of code that can be executed by calling the method. Here is an example of a method inside console, and this is us calling that method. So we are calling the right line method. When our application executes, Windows calls our main method and thereby executes these lines of code. In a similar fashion, when we call right line, 
the write line function's code inside its code blocks will execute before coming out of the method. Just like a class, to place code inside of a method, again, we create a pair of curly braces. Finally, we have a bunch of statements. You can think of statements as an action of the program. A single action the host computer will execute one by one as it runs your program. In this case, we invoke the method right line. That is in the namespace system.console. None of this is important right now. Just know that statements have to end with a semicolon. If we remove a semicolon and build the application with Control Shift B, we again see the same error. And if we click this error and go to the docs on Microsoft, it tells us the compiler detected a missing semicolon. A semicolon is required at the end of every statement. So to form valid syntax, we again put the semicolon back. With all of that said, you can now see that even such a small program, there is lots of syntax to learn. Don't expect to remember all of this yet, but do take note and try to remember the syntax of these parts of code when creating more code as we go forward. I will quickly introduce you to comments as they are very important in code, and I will comment each line of this code for your reference. To start with, a comment begins by placing two forward slashes at any point typically at the end of a line or the start of a line, such as this. I will comment each line so you can visually see what each line is. Now you can see every line of code and the importance. We have a using directive, as mentioned needs a semicolon at the end. We have a namespace declaration, which we mentioned needs curly braces, basically a code block. We have a class that needs a code block. We have a method that needs a code block. And finally, we have statements which need semicolons. So from this, here are the rules I would like you to remember from this lesson. One, using directives and statements must end with a semicolon. And two, namespaces, classes, and methods all use the code block curly braces. You will find that the following two rules is about 80% of all the C-sharp syntax. It's important to ingrain these in your brain as you start, and you will do great. Failure to follow the syntax rules in C-sharp will mean your program is invalid and cannot compile. So you cannot build or run your program until it is 100% valid. There are exceptions to the rule where certain methods don't use curly braces, for example. But don't worry about those exceptions for now. This covers the majority of cases. Experiment with this program. Have a go at removing curly braces, semicolons, changing the name of things, and see how it affects your program. Don't be afraid to break things. It doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't hurt anybody, and it's the best way to learn anything. One more thing before I go, just to highlight something in C-sharp that may not be familiar from other languages. When we mention a statement must end with a semicolon, we don't mean the line must end we are not referring to the physical lines in code. For example, watch what we can do here. Now, do you think this is an error? Because the statement doesn't end with a semicolon? The answer is no. The statement is this whole expression here. And the expression itself, this expression statement, must end with a semicolon. White space and new lines in code in C-sharp is not as important. So we can place new lines at specific areas, such as before the parentheses, before the parameters, or before or after the periods. And it makes no difference to the program itself. Just bear that in mind when we come to do the test.